Joining us now are developer advocates Rachel Tatman and Sarah Robinson to set the stage for what's in store during the developer keynote. Welcome. Rachel, uh, please kick us off by describing Kaggle. Sure. Kaggle is the home of data science. Um, so you might know us for our supervised machine learning competitions. Um, and we still do that, but right now we have a lot more on the site. So we've got public data sets that anyone can use. Um, if you want to analyze your own data, you can upload it privately, you know, not share it out. Uh, and we also have a hosted Jupyter development environment. So um, that includes GPU acceleration offered at no charge. And we just upgraded from K80s to P100s. So if you're looking for a little bit of like zhuzh in your algorithm run speed, uh, it can be a nice, nice little added bonus. Great. And how are data scientists and analysts utilizing Kaggle to support support their machine learning projects? Yeah, a lot of different ways. Um, so the thing I think that's probably most unique about Kaggle is we have a really big community, about 2.7 million registered users, and we have a super active forum. Um, so it can be really hard to find information about your specific questions, especially machine learning and AI, and things are moving so quickly. So having a community that you can go to and ask questions and learn together is a really fantastic resource. And Sarah, have you used Kaggle in your work and seen its benefits in the ML community? Yes, I use Kaggle almost every day. Um, I'm always looking for interesting data sets for machine learning demos and Kaggle is my go-to for that. You can find almost any type of data set you're looking for, images, text, structured data on Kaggle. So it's been a great tool for me. That's fantastic. And what, uh, what ML AI launches are you most excited about? And, and tell me a little bit about why. There's some auto ML launches that I'm super excited about, um, really making it easy for anyone to use machine learning without having to have machine learning expertise. So the first I'll talk about is auto ML tables. Um, which makes it really easy to build custom machine learning models on structured data. So think about anything you might be able to put in a spreadsheet, categorical data, numerical data, building models on that. Um, with AutoML tables, that's really easy. Upload your data to the UI, press a train button, and your model's ready to go. Um, another AutoML launch I'm super excited about is AutoML Vision object detection. Um, so AutoML Vision can already do classification, but now what you'll be able to do is identify regions in your image where um, a certain label exists. So it will re return bounding boxes. So I'm super excited about, about those AutoML launches. Very cool. And we're about to see a showcase highlighting our work with the NCAA using BigQuery ML. What can you tell us about BigQuery ML specifically? Um, BQML lets folks that have structured data stored in BigQuery, uh, BigQuery is our cloud data analytics warehouse, so it lets you create machine learning models on that data stored in BigQuery um, just with a single SQL query. So you don't have to move your data out of BigQuery to use it. Um, it's super simple to use, so you just write a query, your model's trained, and then you can write another query to generate a prediction. Um, I actually gave a session on BQML earlier today um, with one of our customers, AAA, that's using BQML to predict call volumes across their call centers. Great. And Rachel, have you also heard about BQML in the launch, too? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I checked out the NCAA showcase. Uh, one thing that I found really exciting was um, student developers um, were working on developing new features uh, for analyzing basketball games. Um, so one of them was clutchness, like how many points you're going to score in the last five minutes. Um, and I thought that was super interesting because on Kaggle, we've hosted NCAA competitions where you predict the winning team. Um, and I think it was a couple years ago, one of the very high placers had just used linear regression, which is available in um, a big Q. Big Query ML, let me say all the words correctly, um, and also these custom features that they developed. So I'm seeing some, some interesting synergy there. This is a perfect time to check in with our colleague Joanna Smith, who earlier had a chance to stop by our NCAA showcase demo. Industry Solutions neighborhood of our expo floor, looking at this great energy, all these people are really excited, and I'm standing with Alok, who's gonna show us the NCAA demo. You wanna take it away? Yeah, so this is our second year at Google Cloud being the official cloud provider of the NCAA. Um, our theme is know what your data knows. So we've been working with the actual NCAA data, basketball data, oh, to fun. make a lot of in insights and predictions. So let's look at one. We just had a, a national title game, Virginia and Texas Tech, and what we're looking at here is the number of possessions each team will have in regulation. So we predicted that the number will be 63 or fewer, and it was 59 in regulation. So it was right. Not bad. Um, but we've done a bunch more. So one of the other things we did was oh, nice. we looked at a Data Studio dashboard. So Data Studio, another tool made by Google, allows you to visualize your data. Yeah. We had developed a bunch of different metrics for all these teams in NCAA. You can see them on the bottom here, score control, clutchness, discipline, et cetera. But we wanted to surface that data in a way that people could use, filter, and sort. So this has all the 353 teams, but if we just want to look at the champion, we can go here and select, 
champion only. Should have been tagged. And boom, Virginia. <laughs> and now we can see where they rank in all the different categories. No, I like it. Yeah. Is so, that a good score for clutchness? Uh, yeah, so the ranks are right there, so you can tell it's 7th out of 353 teams. That's pretty good. The third in score control. They, they were deserving champion. So you said this is Data Studio, which we know is for visualization, which yeah. is really cool. But uh, you mentioned other cloud tools. I think BigQuery played a big part in this. Can yeah. you show me how that works? Yeah. So the first thing we have to do is write, uh, make a pipeline to ingest the data. So this is a small screen here, but I'll, I'll show you. This is on our Google Cloud blog. We describe the entire pipeline of how we built this data. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of stuff, and then we get to BigQuery right in the middle. And I'm a data scientist. I want stuff in BigQuery because then I can go and do all my stuff, right? So BigQuery, let's do it. Um, and then what we do from there is we take the data, we do a lot of manipulations, and to build that metric like score control, we have to write a bunch of code. All right, Sorry so we got the cloud blog, and then you also posted on Medium, right? Yeah. Some more fun insights? Yeah, so on Medium, what we did was we wanted to talk more in depth about how we built this metric. So one, we wanted to describe in detail for the technical people, but also talk about the basketball context. So you have this thing, how the final score can lie, score control, right? And in here, we go through a couple example games where teams control the score differently. But then, again, we get back to BigQuery. I love it. So here is a long query. And again, it looks fairly complicated. And it kind of is. But it actually is, when you think about how you go about doing this calculation, BigQuery makes it pretty easy with these aggregation functions. And it runs really fast. And it may be long, but it's easy to read. And, and it runs really fast, gets us our results for all um, thousands of games in a matter of seconds. And then we can move forward and do other stuff. I love scale power. Yeah. Now, um, you had one more thing in this blog, right? At the bottom, I thought I was playing with your, what was that, an interactive yes. scatter plot? So if we keep going here, eventually ah. we get to a point where we see the scatter plot, which spots all 353 teams in their school colors and shows their school difference colors. between the score control and a different metric. I like it. So if anyone wants to kind of find it at home, they can search NCAA on our cloud blog, yep. or they can look, uh, we're cross-linked. This is the cloud G publication. Yeah, g.co slash March Madness. Oh, nice. I know it's a little bit past March, but the tournament is, is, is no, still fresh in our on mind, so it, should, it should, be, uh, should be fun to look at. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Yeah. Wow, amazing showcase. How is BigQuery ML changing the game for machine learning for developers and practitioners? Yeah, good question. Um, two things that come to mind for me. Uh, first of all, being able to work in SQL. So something we found in our Kaggle machine learning developer survey is that SQL is actually the third most commonly used language for machine learning. So, uh, and also people who are outside of the machine learning AI space who are just coming into it, many of them are already familiar with SQL. So being able to use tools that you already know how to use is a really big time saver. Uh, and also you don't have to download data locally. So if you've got sensitive data that you can't store locally or it's just like really big and you can't store it on disk, being able to uh, do your, your regression in uh, BigQuery instead of having to like download everything, your Python code, and then upload everything once you've changed your model uh, can be a big time saver. And to add to that, I think PQML is a great entry point for machine learning. Um, so you don't have to worry about any sort of feature engineering. So if you have categorical data, for example, if you're building a model yourself, you would have to one-hot encode that into arrays. Uh, BQML can recognize that it's a categorical column and transform your data for you. Uh, that's, that's excellent. Democratization of data has been a big theme at Google. We really believe that if you want innovation, you have to democratize access to data. Can you talk a little about how BigQuery ML and AutoML are having an impact towards us being able to achieve that goal? Yeah, definitely. So both BQML and AutoML make it easy for anyone, regardless of your machine learning expertise, to build your own custom machine learning model. So you don't need um, a lot of machine learning expertise to get started. You just upload your data, choose the type of model you want, and both BQML and AutoML will handle the rest. And AutoML specifically, you don't need as much labeled data as well. Um, so I know the um, uh, natural language API, sorry, the natural language AutoML that just launched, you only need 100 label examples per category for, for each label in your, your categorical learning example, um, which is very little data, especially when you're looking at like BERT or ELMA or these really, really enormous GPT-2, enormous language models. Um, so being able to get started with relatively little data, smaller time investment, smaller money investment for labeling is a really big you know, movement towards democratization. Great. And Sarah, you'll, you'll actually be talking about the path from cloud auto ML to custom model in your breakout session. Can you give us a preview of the key factors when moving from auto ML into custom ML models? Yeah, definitely. So the goal of our breakout session tomorrow, I'm going to be speaking with Yu Fang, um, is to teach people that may not have built their own custom model before how to get started. Because um, at least for me, the process of starting to learn how to build a custom model was really intimidating. There's lots of resources out there. It's hard to know where to get started. Um, so we're going to break it down, talk about feature transfer, 
transformations, feature engineering that you need to do to go from AutoML to custom model um, and walk through some code. And there'll also be a couple live demos. Now, uh, Rachel, you'll also be leading a session tomorrow uh, using Google's data and AI technologies with Kaggle. Uh, what sort of things will you cover and what part of it are you most excited about? Cool. Um, so we are going to give people a little, little tour of Kaggle because a lot of things have changed recently. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about several integrations that we've made recently. And honestly, the one that I'm most excited about uh, is the ability to take a Kaggle data set and launch it as a Sheets instance, a Google Sheets instance with a single click of a button. Um, and one place where I think this could actually be extremely useful for people is for project management. So you're writing a kernel in a notebook and you're, you're generating, let's say, your hyperparameter search space. You save that as a data set. You launch it as a sheet. And then you can you know, assign action items, link to other kernels, um, use chats, use color coding, which you wouldn't want to do in a CSV, but can be really super useful for project management. So I'm very excited about that integration. Very cool. Excellent. Thank you so much, Rachel and Sarah. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Yes.